2019. But before we go into more detail about these twinnings, uh, I just want to ask my wonderful colleague DY. Uh, DY is our ADI Regional Director for the Asia Pacific Regional Office, and she's going to share some of her thoughts regarding the twinning program as she experienced it firsthand with uh, Alzheimer Indonesia. So DY, would you like to, to share your thoughts? Yes, thank you so much, Laura. Laura is my partner in crime uh, in uh, helping and supporting members, specifically in my role in Asia Pacific. Um, this is such a privilege for me uh, because back in 2013, I was actually the executive director of Alzheimer's Indonesia, and I experienced firsthand the benefit of twinning. Uh, the key word on twinning that I learned is uh, three C's, collaborations, communications, and cultural adaptation. And the experience back in 2011 or 2013 when I first met Joost van der Poel and Thea Brokema and the entire Azama Nederland team has led us to this uh, almost seven years of um, journey in, in the twinning uh, journey between Indonesia and Netherlands. I'm so proud to introduce the first speaker uh, that we learned from Indonesia and the Netherlands. The first one is Amalia Pong Tomo, Deputy Executive Director of Alzheimer's Indonesia. Amalia has spent 20 years working as a creative advertising person. Uh, she also works for multinational agencies like Ogilfi, DDB, and Loe. And she actually started her own agency, Juara. Amalia is the mastermind of the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer, this brochure, accordion brochure, that has been translated to more than 10 languages. And this brochure has been the key um, campaign uh, platform or model on the awareness raising. She moved to the Netherlands and she founded Nemu as well, a creative advertising house um, uh, agency. And she also leads the Alzheimer Indonesia Netherlands chapter. Amalia. The screen is yours. Hi, everyone. It's been an honor to be here. Uh, it's um, it's a bit emotional, actually, the journey, because you are mentioning about the first twinning. And here uh, we have DY and also we have Yostu here, who are uh, one of the first person that I met in the Netherlands when I moved to the Netherlands. OK. Um, the, 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 the time is limited, so me here, Amalia Fong Utomo, I'm here on behalf of many teams, uh, my, my colleague in Indonesia, in the Netherlands, and also our partner with Alzheimer Netherlands also. So here, tweeting program between Indonesia and the Netherlands. The background is uh, Alzheimer Indonesia and Alzheimer Netherlands. Uh, we have a strong collaborations on the twinning program, like DY already mentioned back in 2011, and it's continuously to now, uh, now uh, from 2017 and 2019, and we are delighted that we are will continue in the next three years. And the elements of the projects is uh, we have uh, five uh, elements here. Uh, knowledge transfer between the Netherlands and Indonesia, and surprisingly, Indonesia also having a knowledge transfer to the Netherlands also. And uh, building network volunteer, so it's supporting Indonesian diaspora or Indone uh, Indonesian immigrant uh, or Dutch people with Indonesian background in the Netherlands, like me. And uh, development support activities organization in Indonesia, such as chapter managers. And we are also not just internally and we want to go outside, so we are organizing some public events, training and counseling program, capacity building on post-diagnostic support like uh, dementia care skill training. Next. Yeah, so first thing first is the first one is knowledge transfer from science and practice. Practice. Why we call it uh, science and practice? Because we just uh, not only transferring knowledge to the Netherlands to Indonesia from the science perspective, but we are also uh, sharing the best practice, what is on the operational thing. So it's not just theoretical, but it's on, uh, also on the operational on ground in daily basis. Next. Here uh, we see that uh, transfer knowledge is not just uh, from the webinars and the seminars and the skills and trainings. We have seminars and webinars already 
and especially during the pandemic time we have access to many speakers from the Netherlands and speakers from Indonesia to share, sharing across the both countries through online sessions and also uh, we managed to adapt many Alzheimer Netherlands tools in dementia awareness uh, dementia friendly communities and also early diagnose uh, they have a book called Dementia and You it's in um, English is uh, Dementia What Next it's a simple handy book to uh, first beginners um, so we adapt that book it's collaborative book uh, within the Indonesian immigrant here in the Netherlands translating the book supporting with the visualizing supporting with the illustration uh, illustration and also the graphic design itself and when you see here the pictures our embassy here Indonesian embassy in the Netherlands is also supporting the book so now the book it can be print and it can be downloaded to also as a soft copy so it's really a physical evidence of a transfer of knowledge from the Netherlands to Indonesia and also Alzheimer Netherlands has many uh, handy and friendly um, collaterals, uh, brochures and leaflet. Uh, when you see, uh, as you can see here, we got uh, some brochures. Hut Om Khan is like uh, ten tips uh, people with dementia and how to recognize the signs of dementia. And it's also um, collaborated by Indonesian uh, in the Netherlands and also in Indonesia. So it's really um, collaborative project between the two countries and immigrants right? and the second is building network volunteers Indonesia in the Netherlands next because Indonesia uh, and the Netherlands having a strong um, relationship from the past that's why on 2017 we have Alzheimer Indonesia found Alzheimer Indonesia Netherlands foundations in the Netherlands is the um, to support and raise awareness Indonesians in the Netherlands and also support the Dutch people to getting know about Indonesian cultures and also information for Indonesian people in the Netherlands about dementia and efforts in Indonesia and yes helping uh, um, to accessing the immigrant the minority migrant in indonesia we are the fourth migrant here first is turks moroccans and surinams and uh, indonesia migrant is the fourth in the netherlands so we are going through religious events to the mosque to the church art and cultures to the embassy even to the uh, students associations as you can see in the pictures um, we go to the market, we go to the um, uh, home care, Dutch home care, to give them sessions, to give them uh, a little bit knowledge about Indonesian culture. So when they have a patient, a people with dementia or a client who's supposed to have uh, an Indonesian background, so they have a little bit knowledge about our cultures because Indonesia is really diverse we have uh, we are big countries with a lot of language and also cultures and um and then uh, we also um we think that getting to know and explaining about indonesia cultures in the netherlands is really important so the dutch people can know better how to take care of us if indonesian people uh, indonesian people here getting dementia or um uh, getting um being an elderly here Next. Yeah, so by the end of 2019, we have um, from more than 4,000 uh, dementia friends. And then during the pandemic times, uh, we are switching to online. So we have 29 online sessions now and ongoing. And that's uh, also including risk reduction, meaningful engagement from coloring together, singing Indonesian songs together, cooking to get Indonesian snacks together. So it's all about Indonesian touch or the Dutch touch uh, in the material, in the topic on the webinars. And you can see in the pictures, you can see like pre-pandemic and post-pandemic time. We have sessions in the park on those days and the picnic we have signs of dementia awareness but it's not stopping us we still move into online and you can see the next pictures is what we're doing still um, 
leaf arrangement and flower arrangement sessions with that with online Zoom like this. And also we are now a, a step by step uh, moving into hybrid learning from the pandemic. We have online sessions now. We starting offline with online sessions, of course, following the rules of the Dutch government. Right? And also we are development uh, developing support activities uh, uh, activities in Alzheimer organizations in Indonesia, Thanks. because. We having um, 21 chapters in Indonesia and thanks to the twinning uh, program for three years, it's increasing tremendously. Um, I think it's increasing more than 300% from the volunteers, chapter managers, and also activities. And now from the 21 chapters is connecting each other across Indonesia and also overseas and including the Netherlands, of course. And we have like uh, we have regular chapters meeting and training for the chapter managers, and we have also World Alzheimer's anniversaries to the chapters. Again, you can see in the pictures, when we, uh, pre-pandemic times, we are gathering together once a year. Uh, um, um, we are do training there, workshops, and also networking and getting along together. And now we are still doing it with the Zoom online, as you can see on the top pictures, we call it Coral Tea Time. So every month, instead of once a year, now we're doing it uh, once a month. With our tea, we are um, sharing each other, sharing the feelings as a chapter managers, and also speakers from the Netherlands and also from Indonesia giving trainings, such as fundraising, um, social media, um, uh, arrangement, uh, management, and how to manage the community, and many topics that we share over a cup of tea from our home now. But it doesn't uh, making less the connections, the bonding is still there. That's why, even in pandemic time, we managed to make 90 activities from 21 chapters across Indonesia and overseas. I think it's a, it's a record, even though it's pandemic time, we have a lot of online sessions. Uh, activating by all these uh, lovely my colleague chapters managers next yeah and um um when we are also um doing capacity building internally we also want to make this cause more public so we organizing a couple of public events in indonesia and in Indonesia, uh, now we have three, uh, already three big meeting, uh, big uh, public event. The first one is the ADI Asia Pacific Conference, uh, 2 until 7 November. And it's including seven experts from the Netherlands. So the transfer knowledge is already started to the public too. And the conference is from multidiscipline, from healthcare to youth, commu youth community leaders and attending from 45 representatives from 20 countries. And also we have Hope, Love and Care Public in Malang. It's on 2019. Uh, and that is also uh, we, are, we are having international speakers, including from the Netherlands also. And we have chapter managers in Bali. And in that, at, at that time, we are also having um, training and skills and workshops. So uh, we are continuously now to making a public event in, in online too, in webinars and seminars from both countries for public. Thanks. Yeah, and um, this is uh, the last one, Train the Trainer program. It's also inspired from the Dementia Care Skills Training from ADI. And um, this is part of the twinning because we just, um, not only uh, to the internally for the chapter managers and also for the community on awareness, but we are commit to make more trainers for Indonesia and it starts from the train the trainer program. Uh, so until now we have dementia care skill training offline and online 
and now we have already five lead trainers and I think um, up until now I think we have more and more uh, promising uh, trainers already since um, two weeks ago we just finished our online dementia care skill training online especially for our chapter managers but from there we are really sure that we have more trainers and these trainers can lead other trainers and giving more trainings to the public or maybe to other uh, private sectors to everybody and as you can see again this is offline and online pre-pandemic we are doing it there on 2018 and then this is just two weeks ago we're doing a dementia care skill training uh, online for the first time two weeks ago yeah alzheimer indonesia has received three-year grant so we are having three-year grant from 2017 and 2019 it's from ministry health welfare and sport from the netherlands and this financially support is also collaboration from alzheimer indonesia and alzheimer netherlands and the twinning is recently approved to be extended for the next three years at 2020 and 2023 so hopefully we can be more stable more um, continuously our program with the five pillars of the program thank you very much thank you amalia what a fascinating journey it's such a pleasure for me to also be a part of that um, amazing work and creating impact more and more and capacity building from Amalia, we'd like to hear from Jos van der Poel, Alzheimer's Netherlands. Uh, after job as a personal attendant to a boy with autism, uh, Jos also supported a bipolar disorder young man. Jo Jos started as a volunteer for the Netherlands, uh, Alzheimer's Netherlands. Uh, during the period, she also gave lecture on dementia for families and professional carers. And she also answered and coordinated the Alzheimer helpline. Since 1989, Yos has worked as a, a, a full-time uh, employee for the Alzheimer's Netherlands, and her main task today is compiling and writing information for brochures and our the platform Dementi.nl. Yos, uh, her one of Yos' expertise is in legal protection of people with dementia, and since December 2012. She is involved as a volunteer in the twinning program, and that's how our path has crossed. Yos, the screen is yours. Well, I'm sorry, I don't have a nice presentation. I didn't succeed in making one. But <clears throat> I think I should have been the first speaker because I would like to tell something about the history of um, the twinning. It all started, like Amalia said, in 2011, when our former executive director, Gea Broekema, was invited to come to Indonesia to do a workshop. A workshop for the board of the then organization, Alzheimer organization over there. And some volunteers or family members, a very small uh, number of people in the city of Bandung. And Gea did this workshop, um, she stressed the importance of a strong organization, what an Alzheimer organization can do for people with dementia and their families. She talked about fundraising, she talked about awareness raising. Well, that was about it. The board then was rather um, conservative. They didn't like changing. And happily, uh, D.Y. Uh, came in, and she was like a fresh wind blowing through. So when we arrived on a grant, with the help of a grant of Nutricia Industry, who had then uh, uh, Souvenet, which they marketed, which should be helping uh, against dementia, but it wasn't really true, but then, um, with this grant, we could go with three volunteers um, to Indonesia and give another workshop again in Bandung. We were accompanied by Professor Frans Verhey, who told about diagnosis, how to recognize dementia. Um, 
Kay had talked about the 10 signs of dementia. You already saw the accordion. <coughs> um, we talked about recruiting and training and retaining volunteers, about supporting family um, caregivers, about fundraising again, the importance of a national plan, about capacity building, about advocacy, a number of things. And Alzheimer in Indonesia, um, in a few years, was almost stronger than Alzheimer Netherlands. In 2013, we thought, well, we have a little sister, and now we think we have a very big sister. In 2014, thanks to this grant, we could go again and went to Jakarta and Yogyakarta. Uh, in Yogyakarta, there was a one-day seminar which was well visited by professionals, care professionals, by uh, volunteers of the organization, by uh, relatives of people with dementia. Um, and there, the, the, uh, the subjects were uh, that dementia is a worldwide problem, not only uh, in Indonesia, not only in the Netherlands. There was a session on effective psychosocial interventions. There was a session on experiences by people with dementia and their relatives. And a session on coping with dementia. From there we went to Yogyakarta, where we uh, had a session for nurses at the Gajah Gajamada University. And finally, on the day we would return to Amsterdam, we had uh, the opportunity to talk to neurologists who had a seminar. Well, that was about the history. And, and then Amalia came to the Netherlands. And in a very short time, she organized, I think, all um, Indonesian students in the Netherlands to help her, um, especially with the uh, boots which she organized at several markets. Um, Amalia, as uh, DY said, uh, thought of this uh, beautiful brochure, which has now been translated not only in Dutch, but also in other languages which we will use for um, uh, informing migrants, other migrants than Indonesian people in the Netherlands. I think it would be very useful uh, for us too. Um, well, this, this was my story, I think. <laughs> story. It really brought me back to the memories of the first time I met you uh, uh, back in 2013 and 2014. It was an honor to also host you when you were here. And uh, this is uh, this is such an honor for, for me to also be involved with the Alzheimer's Indonesia and Alzheimer Netherlands twinning. And uh, from this session, uh, I will pass it on to my wonderful colleague, Laura, uh, to continue the session. Thank you, Jos and Amalia. Thank you so much to...